There are many notable Knights of Salamnia, but it's the organization behind them that was once a shining light revered by all and then fell to abject darkness. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the Knights of Salamnia. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel, ring the bell, and you can further help this channel and pick up Dragonlance Gaming materials using my affiliate link in the description below. I will have to be succinct as it can be a lengthy discussion, but on my honor, I will strive to do the knighthood justice in this presentation. When I reflect on the Knights of Salamnia, I immediately think of the Order's heroes, or the Oath, Est Sularis Oath Mythas, or My Honor is My Life. But that's just a small part of what makes up the Order. Let's explore the knighthood through the ages of Kryn for a full measure on which to judge them by. It all starts in the Age of Dreams, with a conflict between the Argothian Emperor and a rebellion in the northeastern reaches of his empire. In the spirit of brevity, the Emperor sent his commander, Vinus Salamnus, to crush the rebellion. But when Vinus arrived, he judged the rebellion justified, and not only switched alliances, but led the raid on Daltagoth that would be later known as the War of Ice Tears. The capital fell to the rebellion within two months, and the citizens sued their Emperor for peace and won their freedom. They declared Vinus Salamnus their king, and named their newly won land, Salamnia, after him. Vinus was an honorable man, and was not foolish enough to think all others would be the same. In 1775 PC, he decided to go on a quest of honor, in order to discover how he could maintain unity in his unified kingdoms of Salamnia. After weeks of searching, he found himself in the wilds of the St. Christ Isles. He came upon a glade, featuring a black granite stone in its center. Upon that stone, Vinus supplicated himself to the god's wisdom. Three deities appeared before him. Paladine, the god of balance, justice and defense. Kiri Jolith, the god of just warfare. And Habakkuk, god of good nature, loyalty, and the elements. They gave him the outline for a knighthood which would serve to inspire and defend the citizens of Salamnia. The knighthood would consist of three separate orders to balance each other. Each order would reflect one of the three gods' ideals. As a final blessing, the gods transformed the stone into a pillar of translucent white crystal, which would sanctify the glade and seal the unity of the gods to uphold the knighthood as long as they walked in honor and worthiness. The knighthood would become known for developing men into true heroes, one of which was Badal Brightblade, who single-handedly stood between fierce desert nomads and a pass into Salamnia and fought them to a standstill. He held that pass as guardian until reinforcements arrived. Another is Huma Dragonbane, who, with the aid of a silver dragon, managed to slay the Queen of Darkness, banishing her to the abyss with the Dragonlance and ending the Third Dragon War. The Age of Might would prove to be a defining moment for the Knights of Salamnia. Up until the Cataclysm, the Knights were the greatest order of chivalry in the history of Kryn. After the Cataclysm, they were blamed for the loss and devastation. Though, as an order, they were not responsible, but there were Knights who had an opportunity to change the course of history, preventing the Cataclysm from ever taking place. One such Knight was Lord Soth of Dergard Keep a Knight of the Rose. Lord Soth was warned by his mistress about the Cataclysm, and when he started towards Istar to stop it, he crossed a troop of elven clerics who threatened to reveal the truth of his murdered wife and his illegal wedding to his mistress. Rather than face his own shame, he turned back and the fiery mountain crashed down on Kryn. Now, not all knights had such shame or lived as corrupt lives, Rather, some tried to leverage the catastrophe to expand their land holdings. Combined, these acts turned the citizens against the order, and their fate was sealed. 
Knights were murdered, their homes were invaded, and families slain or forced into exile. The knights who remained were forced to live in secret, and some would leave their homeland and settle on St. Christ Isle. The knighthood consists of three orders, all ruled by the Lord of Knights. The Lord of Knights is an elected office which occurs in a grand circle of knights. The position must be filled by a high justice from the Order of the Rose, a high clerist from the Order of the Sword, or a high warrior from the Order of the Crown. These positions are elected from within the respective order without interference from the other two. Since the Cataclysm, there hasn't been knights in sufficient numbers to convene the circle, so the post has stayed vacant. There are individual cells or circles of knights, some open and other living clandestinely, which provide aid to the community they reside in and receive the pledge of local knights. The knights of Salamnia subscribe to the oath in the measure. The oath is the aforementioned Est Solaris Oth Mythas, and the measure is an extensive set of laws, many volumes in total, that clarify what honor means. The measure is complicated and exacting, and all knights are expected to live up to and are ruled by the measure. It wouldn't be until the most dire moments of the War of the Lance that the knighthood would realize the spirit of the oath and that honor doesn't lie in the measure, but rather in the hearts of true knights. The knights of the crown personify loyalty and obedience. Knights of the sword live by heroism and courage, and knights of the rose exemplify honor through wisdom and justice. All those who desire to enter the knighthood must begin as squires, then, when found worthy, would be sponsored by a knight and presented to the knightly council. If there's no doubt to his honor, he's accepted into the knights of the crown. A crown knight must be experienced and have no question to his honor in order to petition to become a sword knight. To join the knights of the sword, the applicant must pass a witnessed quest of heroism and valor. If the knight wishes to be a member of the Order of the Rose, they must start in the Order of the Sword, Joining the Knights of the Rose historically meant being born into a loyal house. After the cataclysm, that changed only little, requiring the applicants to recite his honorable lineage. If there is no question to the Knights' loyalty, they are sent on a quest to prove his worthiness. Depending on the order, Knights must tithe to the knighthood they belong to, or are forbidden from retaining personal wealth altogether. Crown Knights gain weapon specializations, Sword knights are clerics, gaining access to spells, and rose knights are commanders, who gain elite proficiencies. The military power of the knights is structured so as to temper the leader's judgment in battle and maintain knightly unity. Each order maintains seven armies apiece. Each of the twenty-one armies is jointly ruled by three lord knights, one from each order. Knights are decorated by wearing a clasp bearing the symbol of his order, a rose, a sword, or a crown, and they use it to fasten their cloak to their armor. All knights carry a shield bearing the symbol of the Knights of Salamnia, a kingfisher with wings half-extended, a sword grasped by both its claws, a rose centered on the sword between the claws, and a crown held over the bird's head in its beak. And that is a brief synopsis of the Knights of Salamnia. I'll return in future installments to dive deeper into each order and the measure itself. But are you a fan of the knighthood, or do you think they're just a disgraced order? Do you have a favorite Knight of Salamnia? Leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and like this video. And remember, you can always support this channel and pick up some Dragonlance gaming materials by using the affiliate link in the description below. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance Saga, and I hope you'll join me in that celebration. Thank you for watching, this has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, my feelings and I are not on speaking terms.